think that really for long-term learning, for lasting learning, it depends critically on what learning technique you're using and also when you're using it. And I think that many of the learning techniques that students use um, intuitively might seem like they're effective, like just restudying my notes or rereading the textbook chapter or highlighting what I think is important information. Um, but there's a fair amount of research that suggests that those learning techniques aren't really actually that effective. With respect to the recommendations for learning techniques that students can use on their own with minimal support or guidance from instructors, they're really just, there are two biggies. Self-testing is incredibly effective, that's the what to do, and spaced practice, the when to do it, um, spread your study time out over time, and if you put those two together to self-test on spaced schedules, those are the two, far and away, um, the two best strategies that students can use to enhance long-term learning on their own outside of the classroom. So, for example, um, suppose that you're going to try to self-test and you develop a stack of flashcards maybe to learn some of the information you need to learn for a class, let's say. Um, one option is that you could sit down with that stack of flashcards and just practice them over and over and over again for, say, an hour or two hours if you really have the patience to do it. Um, but actually, your time would be much better spent if instead, let's say, you practice with those flashcards for 15 minutes or 30 minutes on four different days instead of doing it all in one day. Um, that's called spaced practice. Um, so having smaller chunks of time where you spend studying something but doing those on different days instead of all on the same day. Right? Um, and of course, there is also the question of how much you practice, how much you self-test. Um, it definitely is important to go until you can get something right, basically. There's going to be a lot more payoff for long-term learning, lasting learning, if you practice until you can get it right. Um, but again, it's important to do that on different days, several different days. Um, the more different days that you can practice until you get something right, there's going to be major payoff for long-term learning by getting something right multiple times on different days. We don't always necessarily always have the same learning goals. So I, I definitely understand students who's most important here and now, my goal is I need to pass this exam. Um, and maybe not focused on lasting learning or long-term learning, I just need to pass this exam. The beauty is, again, if, if students can effectively implement self-testing on a spaced schedule, you will satisfy both goals. So in other words, if you spread your study out over time and if it involves self-testing and make sure some of that self-testing happens the night before an exam, it shouldn't all happen the night before the exam, but if some of your self-testing happens the night before the exam, um, that is a really good way to make sure you do well on the exam. But the beauty is it will also pay off for long-term learning after the exam. Um, part of this, I think, is, is trying to encourage students to adopt both learning goals because you can satisfy both learning goals with the same set of strategies. And I often even tell my own students, um, think about how much you're paying to take this class. Don't you want to walk away from this class actually having gotten something for your money? In other words, that you want to walk away from this class knowing more than you did before you took it, remembering what you've learned, being able to use what you learn. So you want your learning goal not just to be to get a good grade on the exam, but to actually have something to show for the time and the effort and the money that you invested in this course, because that's really ultimately the long-term goal.